Well, I'm on my way to one of my favorite cities in the Southeast, Charleston, South Carolina. I'll be visiting Louisa Cameron. Uh, she's got a project she wants to do, and I'm gonna see if I can help her out. Hi, Ron. Good morning, Lisa. Come on in. How are you? I'm great, thank you. I'm just getting ready to do some gardening projects, and I need your help. Well, I know that we're gonna be building something called a coal frame. Yes. But I have to confess, I'm not really sure what that's used for. Well, it's used as a miniature greenhouse without heat. That's why it's called a coal frame. Okay. Louisa's passion is gardening, and down here in Charleston, she can garden year-round. She'll use the coal frame to incubate plants she'll grow from cuttings. We've come up with a simple design, a basic box supported by four legs. On top, we'll place a hinged cover made of clear acrylic plastic that will allow sunlight to provide warmth for the growing plants. First things first, so we'll start by cutting the pieces for the two by two frame. I want you to tell me how you feel about using this saw right now, that you haven't touched it yet. I think it's a terrifying looking piece of equipment. Okay. We'll start by building the front and back sections of the base. So it's clear that the only way Louisa will become comfortable with the power miter box is to dive right in. Now, with a little instruction first. Pressing into the corner. Okay. Perfect. Okay, and now I turn it on. Great. Look at that. Now, how is that? Is it is it frightening now? No, no. I I just had a sense of my hands being too close to it, but you don't. It's you're protected. That is beautiful. The cutting complete, we lay out the pieces on a temporary work table and begin drilling clearance holes for the screws that will hold the frame sections together. Countersinking the holes will allow the screw heads to be flush with the wood. And I want to use these stainless steel screws. They're rust proof. They just go right in the holes that we drilled just a Can few minutes ago. Can I hold this ago. for you? If you would, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. Great. Just like that. Want to try one? Yes, I do. Go. There. Okay. Good. Okay, let's move on. Good. The next step is to install the braces that will connect the front and back frames. Lay three of these out here. Okay. Kind of uh, like that. All right. Uh, here's the front frame that we just did. We're going to attach that now to this brace. Okay, flip this over now. If you could hold that, Louisa, right there. Got it. And I'll put the, uh, the other side in. And you're using that piece as a little brace. Yeah, this is so you can push against this and they sure. won't slide away all the way over this way. Very nice. I can see the okay. shape of it now. You're getting this take shape, right. so to speak. Louisa drives the final screw into the frame, and it's time to take a look. Actually, let's set this down on the ground. I want, I want you right. to see it. It's see sort the of, height? Yeah. Hmm? Oh, that's... That is Reaching really there. nice. That's got great dimensions. All right, now we've got the pilot holes here. With the frame together, we'll move on to the sides of the planting box. For this, we'll use two rows of three quarter inch cedar tongue and groove planks. By putting the tongue up, we'll form a joint that will prevent the soil and sand from seeping out. Okay. Let's Are see. you flush on your end? Flush on my end. Okay. Yes. Let's go ahead and run the screws in. Okay. Should we lift her up? Yes. Great. There we go. Okay. So oh, that looks so nice. We're moving right along here, aren't we? We are. Let's put the uh, bottom in here next. Because it resists decay and insects, we'll also use cedar for the bottom. These planks, though, have no tongue and groove edges. Mm, smells good, too. It is. This is cedar's wonderful. Now, some of the planks will need a little detail work to fit around the corners. So I'll introduce Louise to, you guessed it, my Japanese handsaw. Pull it, now come in just a little bit more from this direction. Straight up and down. Get it. Oh, that's just lovely. All right. Okay, there you go. All right, let's see if it fits just so. I think it's just right. There you go, final board. Great. That's it. Now, what do we do next? Are we going to put the top on? Yeah, I want to actually want to put a trim strip on here just to cover this up. 
slide it over here to this 45 degree mark with the red arrow on 45. The trim pieces around the top will have 45 degree angles cut on the ends. To save time and steps, we bring this portable battery operated miter box right to our work site. Good. All right. What is it? I think it's just right. Good. These rust resistant finish head screws go in quickly, reduce the chance of splitting, and are practically invisible once in place. Great. Now we're ready to build the frame for the acrylic plastic top. Using the table saw, I cut slots or dados on the inside edges of the frame. These will hold the clear plastic panel in place. Well, it's getting kind of dark, so I'm going to go out and have dinner in Charleston. I hear some great food here. And uh, I'll be back in the morning and we'll finish this up. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, we'll see you then. Well, it's a little cooler this morning, huh? It is, but it's going to warm up later. Okay, well, this is that strip that we cut last night with the groove or dado in the edge. This is going to be part of the frame that'll be on the top here. I'll have a plexiglass center. So let's start by cutting a miter on one end here, and we're going to assemble this the same way we did this trim piece right here. The ends of the frame sections will also have angled miter cuts. Wow, you were right on the money there. Before assembling the frame, I apply waterproof polyester glue to the joints. Then we clamp the frame sections to the work table to keep them from moving around. We check each corner for squareness and then fasten the joints with finish head screws. Okay, this looks like... This is the moment we've been waiting for right here. Yes. Oh, it's perfect. So we in. Well, look at that. We'll finish this off with brass hinges, handles, a chain to keep the top from falling back, and a bottom shelf. Now we're going to leave these boards loose in the bottom right here uh, for a couple reasons. You can replace them and also I want these crevices between your cracks between to give us some drainage. But I don't want to take a chance that the soil or sand is going to wash out. So we'll put this uh, weed cloth down here which will let the water go through to keep the soil in. That is a nice addition. And you said you wanted a portion of this sand and a portion of this uh, soil, right? I'd like that very much. So that's why we're putting this in. And in here. Go ahead and go. How much you want? You want the whole thing in here? I think we need the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, I think so too. Whoa. Okay. Well, okay. that looks so very promising. Nice. That'll do it. Looks like it's just inviting some kind of plant right now. It sure does. As a matter of fact, I have a hydrangea cutting, and I'll show you what I'm talking about for the rooting. Okay, great. Well, I think we're ready to root. And I think we're a great team. We are. Thank you. This is a beautiful project, and I'll make wonderful use of it. So you'll just be putting the cuttings in here now? I will. I'll cut them and put them in some rooting hormone and just put them in the sand here, the moistened sand. You know, for someone who's never used tools before, you did amazingly well. And you're a wonderful teacher. Thank you.